The Mr. Mini ITX Ironclad Plus is a custom I.O. board for the DE10 Nano that allows you to have a Mr. setup on a Mini ITX, Micro ATX, or ATX computer case. This gives you so many options for choosing a case for your Mr. setup. You can opt for a larger case and bling it up with RGB, or you can go small and have something that can blend in with your living room setup. Another option would be to create a Commodore 64 replica using this case from MyRetroComputer.com. If you don't like the case you have, you can always switch to a new one. It's all up to you. At the time of this video, the board costs 165 euros, which is about 182 US dollars. This is going to be a two-part series. This video will be going over the board and testing several Mr. FPGA peripherals. And in part two, I will go in detail on how to set it up. I would also like to thank Def Mod for sending me this board to show to you. All the opinions on this video are my own and the only feedback I received was to ensure the accuracy of the information I'm presenting to you. So let's see what you get when you order a Mr. Mini ITX Ironclad Plus. You get a remote control kit, a USB 3.0 user port adapter for snack and MT32 Pi connections, all the interconnects needed to attach the DE10 Nano to the main board. You get the Mini ITX Ironclad Plus main board with the IO backplate already mounted. And here we have the PC speaker and the IR receiver for the remote control kit. Okay, so you know what you get, but what will you need to provide yourself? Well, you will obviously need a case. The case you choose will also determine the power supply you will need. For my case, I use a Pico PSU connected to an external power supply. Bigger cases will need an internal power supply. Make sure you find out what kind of power supply you will need for your case. It is also recommended that you get a heatsink and fan for your DE10 Nano. Or if you want the system cooled passively, you can opt to purchase the massive heatsink from DefMod's website. Now let's go over what the board has. In the back of the board, you have two USB ports, an extra micro SD slot, the analog video output port, audio output port that supports both analog and digital audio. Digital audio is done by using a Toslink to 3.5 millimeter mini Toslink adapter. There's an ethernet port and extra USB ports, analog tape input for course that can read analog tapes, a serial port for snack and MT32 Pi compatibility. On the regular I.O. board, this is a USB port, but the Ironclad Plus uses DB9 instead. The included DB9 to USB adapter will let you use standard USB snack peripherals on this port. This DB9 port has some advantages over regular snack, and I will talk about that later. Here is another analog output port. This port has the advantage of consolidating both analog audio and video into one connection and is compatible with Genesis 2 RGB cables. I'll go over this connector in a little more detail later. Finally, there's also empty slots for the DE10 Nano's HDMI port and its debug port. Now let's go over the top of the board and look at the parts you'll most likely make use of. This area here is where you will place the DE10 Nano using the interconnects provided with the kit. These interconnects help future-proof the design since they are removable and will allow for future expansion or for dual SD RAM if you need it. Having the option to use dual SD RAM will help future cores that may require it or give a more accurate play experience when a second SD RAM stick is installed. The PlayStation core and the upcoming Saturn and Jaguar cores are some that will have the ability to make use of a second RAM stick. Now back to the board. There's also a sensor that monitors your DE10 Nano's temperature. And if your DE10 Nano gets too hot, the board will warn you by flashing an LED light. And if the temperature keeps staying too hot, the board will safely shut down the DE10 Nano to prevent any damage to it. This sensor can also automatically control the speed of a fan that is connected to a PWN4 pin header on the board. If we move to the bottom, you will see some headers that you will find on regular computer cases. This HD audio header allows you to connect to a case's front audio connectors for audio in. Useful if you want to read a tape and not go to the back of the case to get access to audio input. Also, when using a separate DAC connected to the audio expansion port here, 
you get amplified headphones out to a case's front audio ports. Over here is a header for a case's front USB ports, headers for a case's front panel power button and LED lights, and an internal USB port for a USB hard drive or other USB device you may want to hide inside the case. To the right, you have headers for the internal PC speaker. This speaker provides some audio feedback for certain case features. Another header port for the included IR remote kit, a battery compartment for the real-time clock. This compartment holds a CR2032 battery and you will have to provide your own battery. And over here is a standard 24-pin power connector. So you are not going to use the DE10 Nano's power brick. Depending on the case you use, you will either have to use an internal PC power supply or an external one. To the top, we have headers for any fans you may want to attach. You may have noticed this board also has buttons and headers for other functions that are on the standard I.O. board. For example, here is where you will find the sync on green and VGA power options. And over here are the I.O. board user, reset, and menu buttons. Don't worry, you won't need to use these buttons after you build your setup. These functions will also be available through the case's power button. If you know how to build a PC, then you'll have no problems putting this together because it's very similar to how you would build a PC. If you have no knowledge of building a PC, then wait for my detailed video on how to build this setup. But for now, here's a quick setup guide. Before you build an Ironclad Plus Mister setup, you have to decide what case you are going to use. The case you choose will determine the kind of power supply you can use. This is the case that I'm using. It's pretty small, so there's not much room for an internal power supply. So I use a Pico SPU connected to a 120 watt power supply, which is more than enough wattage for the Ironclad Plus. For recommendations on power requirements, check out the Ironclad Plus product page. The board is assembled very similar to how you build a PC case. You first attach the DE10 Nano to the board using the appropriate bridges and ribbon cable. Make sure you have your SD card inserted into the DE10 Nano. After everything is built, it's going to be a pain to switch memory cards. But since the SD card is easily accessible over the network and you can increase storage by connecting a hard drive to the internal USB port, the SD card placement is rarely an issue. Now, after attaching the DE10 Nano to the Ironclad Plus, lay the board into the case of your choice. Then screw in the board like how you would any PC motherboard. You can use a mini ITX, micro ATX, or ATX computer case. Connect the appropriate headers for power, fans, and front USB ports. Use an internal or external PC power supply to power the setup. Install any fans or hard drives you want, and then close up the case. Connect the case to your TV and plug in the power and any controllers. And finally, turn it on using the case's power button and you're all set. But this is not where my setup is going to stay. Its home is going to be in my living room connected to my TV. This was a quick overview on how to assemble the board. For more detailed instructions, check out the DefMod website or check out part 2 of this video which should come out soon after this one. The menu, user and reset functions for the Mr. OS are all handled by the power button. To bring up the menu, press the power button once. To reset, press the power button twice. And for the user functions, press the power button three times. This is used when setting up your controls and you want to skip certain actions. And to turn off the setup, you just hold down the power button. You also get an included remote control kit. This allows you to conveniently power your Mr. Setup on and off. And to use a standard I.O. board's menu, user, and reset buttons. You cannot use it to navigate the menus. One tricky thing to know about the IR receiver is where to put it after it's installed. Since it's IR or infrared, you need line of sight between the receiver and the remote. Here, I have my case all set up with the IR receiver inside. When I try to use the remote in front of the case, it won't work. 
However, if I turn the case on its side, it will work because of the holes located on the sides. These holes allow the remote to communicate with the receiver. This isn't ideal. I want the case to be on its front when it's in my living room setup, so I can either not completely close the case and have the IR receiver sticking out, or I can drill a hole somewhere on the case so the IR receiver can stick out of it. I opted to drill the hole at the top, but another option would be to drill a small hole in front of the case and align the IR receiver to that hole. Maybe the case you have will have what's necessary to make the IR receiver work, or you may find a better solution than I did. I opted to drill a hole and that works perfectly. Check out these images on how a setup with the holes drilled in the front would look like. I feel it looks a lot cleaner and will implement this method in the future. I'll just cover the hole I created at the top with some black masking tape. If you have an MT32 Pi, you can use it with a board, but you'll need to use the included USB to DB9 adapter. This adapter allows for USB, SNAC, and MT32 Pi connectivity. There is also a DB9 version of the MT32 Pi hat that you can obtain from antoniovillena.es. Using the MT32 Pi on the Ironclad Plus worked flawlessly. It was automatically detected by AO486 and I was successfully able to get MT32 music working in games. Snack works just fine too. For those of you that don't know, Snack is a way of using original console controllers with zero lag. I tested NES, Genesis, and Neo Geo connections with no issues. Light gun games using a real NES zapper on the NES core also worked great. If you already have Snack adapters, you will also need to use the USB to DB9 adapter. However, this port has features not available with Snack because it supports an enhanced version of Snack. This enhanced version of Snack, called Snack ENCC, allows you to use two original controllers on a core. For example, with an appropriate adapter, you can plug two original NES controllers for two-player gaming, something that's not possible with regular Snack. Two-player adapters are available for Super NES, NES, Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, and Neo Geo controllers. There is also an adapter that bundles all those controller ports into one box called a Decapod. The DefMod purchase page offers all these adapters available for sale. Another feature Snack ENCC offers is the ability to use either an original Genesis or DB15 arcade controller on other cores such as the NES and Super NES cores with no lag. Keep in mind that this enhanced version of Snack is not supported by all cores, but there are forks of the core that do support them. These four cores are synced with the main core soon after an update is made so you don't have to worry about using outdated cores. Check out my video on how to obtain these four cores. While this NAC ENCC port is compatible with the USB serial port of the standard I.O. board, the standard I.O. board's USB serial port is not compatible with SNAC ENCC, so you cannot use the enhanced features and four cores with the standard I.O. board. As far as video quality is concerned, the board uses the same HDMI port from the DE10 Nano, so you know what you will be getting there. The Ironclad Plus also gives you the same analog output connections as a standard I.O. board via its VGA port. That means you'll be able to connect to a CRT, PVM, or BVM to make games look like they originally were meant to. I connected the Ironclad Plus to my CRT using composite video, and it works and looks great. There is no difference in video quality between the Ironclad Plus and my other Mr. Setup using Composite. I use this adapter made by Antonio Villena that will output Composite and S-Video through the VGA port. This adapter is also available for sale as an optional accessory along with the Ironclad Plus. If you're interested in learning more about this adapter, check out my full video on it. This connector here also gives you the ability to output analog audio and video through a Sega Genesis 2 connector. The advantage of using this port over the VGA port is that it carries both audio and video, so you use fewer cables. 
Also, VGA to SCART cables can be a hit or miss. It's much easier to find high quality cables for the Genesis. Unfortunately, this port is not compatible with composite or S-Video, so you'll have to stick with the VGA port along with an adapter if you want to use those connections. The port is only compatible with RGB and component. Unfortunately, I was not able to test out RGB or component because I do not have a CRT that supports those connections. You're going to get some really great audio output from the Ironclad Plus board. It isolates the analog audio signals from other electrically noisy sources like fans and uses Panasonic caps at the output. Here are some audio captures of what you can expect out of the Ironclad Plus. However, there might be some audio files out there that might prefer to use a separate audio DAC. For those users, DefMod is creating an audio expansion called the Ironclad Blaster FX that adds an I2S DAC to your Ironclad Plus and also enables the headphones amplified audio out that a case may have on its front panel. Or if you already have a DAC, you can also install your own. Okay, so let me talk about other things I would like to do with the setup. I'm undecided on whether I want to add an internal hard drive. I'm fine using the SD card, and for the upcoming PlayStation and Saturn cores, I'm storing most of those games on a NAS. It turns out that Ethernet gives you the best performance anyway. Check out Mr. Addon's blog post where he has tested and compared the read and write speeds between the SD card, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and USB. So since I'm going to have this setup connected over Ethernet, I'll hold off on putting a hard drive in it. One thing I do want to look into is getting a better looking case. I love the freedom you get with choosing cases, and there are a lot of options. Something like this case from Raging Tech looks really cool, or something with an LCD screen that is compatible with the Mr. TTY to OLED project. I'll have to do more research, but right now, I'm just going to enjoy the current setup now and then decide on a different case later. Another Mr. Setup I would like to have is one dedicated for computer cores. The C64 case from MyRetroComputer.com comes close to beating my dream case for this. The only issue I have with it is that it does not have all the keys from a full-size keyboard. What I really want is a case that looks like a Commodore 128, but with all the keys from a modern full-size keyboard. So that's the Mr. Mini ITX Ironclad Plus. I'm really enjoying this setup, and I know I've said this already, but it's really cool to have a Mr. Setup using pretty much any PC case you want. If you're building a new Mr. Setup or looking for a different housing for your current one, consider the Ironclad Plus. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.